if both Russia and the United States understand the scale of the ISIS threat, mm. why are you not able to talk about it in a really comprehensive way? Well, we are talking about it. And I think you saw President Obama and President Putin talk at the beginning of this week. You've Frostily. Seen, well, you've seen Secretary Kerry and his counterpart, uh, Foreign Minister Lavrov, talk. Uh, we have our uh, their defense leadership, our defense leadership, talking around deconflicting. So we are talking. We have to talk and we have to act. And that's what we're doing, acting against the atrocities you've just seen that ISIL is committing with 65 other countries, including the UK. And we need to act diplomatically and politically to build a political solution to bring security and stability to Syria. But in the region, it doesn't feel like that. Because, for example, the United States has accused the Russians of hitting some of the forces that they've actually trained. Um, and at the same time, we had this feeling over this last 36 hours that basically the Russians had decided what they were going to do, and they were going to do it whether you liked it or not. Well, I think there's a role that Russia can play, a very constructive role on these two distinct but overlapping challenges, one being ISIL, the other being a political solution in Syria. So we welcome, and the president said this, uh, if Russia wants to join with those other 65 other countries and work together in coalition to defeat and uh, degrade ISIL, absolutely, we need their help there. We also need their help. I mean, it's well known to everybody that Syria is a client state of theirs. They've propped up Assad for a long time. They could be helpful in a political transition to get Syria to a better place politically, not militarily. So the concern is they could be constructive in both those areas. They could also be extremely counterproductive if their goal is just to prop up Assad, because he makes both situations worse. But are we wrong to, to, to fear that basically you have America and Russia at war in a theater in which there is not the greatest possible coordination between them. The real fear that well, one could hit the other. But remember, I mean, John, this was the discussion between President Obama and President Putin on Monday talking a lot. They talked about a lot of things, but de-conflicting was a major topic to avoid precisely what you're talking about. So how do we move forward? I mean, do you have to accept for the time being that evils there are, and the lesser of the two is probably the man who's killed his own people, Assad, and the greater is ISIS, and that perhaps ISIS is what has to be concentrated upon. No, we reject but... that. And we reject that clearly because I don't think we have to choose between terrorism and tyranny. There is an alternative to those. And I thought it was telling that President Obama stood up in front of his fellow world leaders at the General Assembly and talked about the 70-year journey that we've been on to do precisely that. There is another choice. It's hard. It's slow but we can make slow, steady, and important progress. And in the case of Syria, with all the tragedies we've seen, not just what you've shown there, but the humanitarian chaos that's been created and millions and millions of lives disrupted, but we are acting, we have been acting, we need to continue to act with great urgency. But the, there are elements that you don't, that you only have a tender relationship with. Iran, for example, we don't really know now quite what the Russian Tehran axis might be. I mean, we think the Iranians may be in the theater. Well, look, I mean, I think you're... We know what we want, right? And if you listen to the words coming from Russia today, they seem to be saying the right things. And the key thing is, are they doing the right things in each of those areas? A, to combat ISIL, and B, to get to a political transition in Syria. We know what of Syria that is whole, that is secure, that's stable, that's pluralistic. That's the goal. Now, how do you get there? What's that process? That, of that's, course... Yeah, I mean, yeah. that is... The and all the details of how, we don't know. Candidly, but we're going to get that by engaging with Russia, by engaging with others in the neighborhood. We've talked about that openly. That's the work ahead of us. That's the work we have to do. Ambassador, I hate to visit something on you which has happened during this program, which is mm. that we've learned that there's been the most appalling killing in the United States. It appears now that the reports are saying 15 people dead in this community school in Oregon from a mass mm. shooting. And one is bound to ask... I know, I mean, President Obama has said he's against... You know, he wants to tighten gun control, but this is crazy. Well, I'm, I just learned about it as I walked into your studio, so I don't know the details. Obviously, my heart and the American people's heart goes out to the victims and their families, and I, I don't know the details. What we do know is that this happens too much in our country, and President Obama has talked a lot about it, um, and he's tried to put forward proposals to reduce gun violence. And the fact is, every American who's learning this news that we just learned is horrified by gun violence. Nobody likes it. Now, what we're going to go do to change it, President Obama has some proposals. Um, we are fighting that out in our democracy. We haven't gotten there yet. Whatever we do do won't reduce them all, 
President Obama knows that. We know that. But we need to do something. And that's what he's fighting so hard for. Ambassador, thank you very much indeed for coming in and for talking about both these subjects.